Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, good evening, actually. It's 8.16, 8.17 p.m. We're doing the daily tiny shear a little bit later than usual, but that's okay. Still still plenty of time. Today is the 21st day of Sivan, June 27th. In today's lesson, time and space, meaning the universe, are justified, meaning propelled into existence by Malchus, by the part of Hashem that's like the king, as previously explained. But as Malchus exists within its own source, which is Havaya, and united with it, its source being pure God, beyond time and space, it loses its separateness. So it's no longer considered king or anything. It's just part of God. And its existence at this level is Yechideilah, the higher level of unity with God. So the lower level of unity is the expression of Hashem that creates the world, that we dive into, that's within nature. Yes, albeit hidden, but it's still here in this world. And then you have Yechideilah, which means the higher level of unity of godliness, which is so high that everything is one with God. There's no time, space, nothing else exists. The term world can only be applied to the dimension within space and time. So that's what it is. Space refers to east, west, north, and south, upward and downward. And when we talk about time, we're referring to past, present, and future. Only with regard to entities that are subject to the limitation of space and time can the term world be applied. All these dimensions of space and time have no relation to the holy supernal attribute of the world of Atsilus because of those, because those attributes are infinite. Atsilus being so close to God that there's no time and space. It doesn't exist there. As explained earlier, the attribute of Chesed is infinite. And so too are the other attributes of the world of Atsilus. So by definition, they are not at all subject to the limitations of space and time. <laughs> Only considering concerning the attribute of Malchus, is it possible to say that he is king above without end and below without limit? <laughs> and likewise in all four directions. This means to say that Hashem is king of all creatures from the highest to the lowest. So we're speaking about Malchus. When we say that, it is in order to use terminology that has some relationship with space, such as higher and lower. This indicates that Malchus itself has some relationship to the aspect of space and time. And so too when it comes to time. Hashem Melech, Hashem Melech, Hashem Yimlech. God reigns, God's, God has reigned, and God will reign. Like the king was in charge in the past, in the present, and in the future. Meaning, So the life force of space and time, and they're coming into being from nothingness, they're also a creation. Not just this world, but within this world, there is the concept of space and time. So space and time is a creation. It's a very difficult thing for us to wrap our heads around because we are programmed to think within space and time. You can't think of something that's not taking up space, that's not within space. And time is also a very difficult concept because that's, that's what this world is made up of. And since Hashem's attribute of Malchus is united with his essence, and that's the part of Hashem that we relate to that creates time and space, and since that Malchus is united with his essence and being in an absolute union, 
as we'll explain soon. So at some time, at some point in time, all these different levels of Hashem become nullified. Therefore, so when we talk about time and space, the closer it gets to Hashem, once it goes above the world of Bria, now it's in Atzilus, post Hashem, there's no space and time up there. Go figure out. Go figure out how that works. It's impossible. So the space and time disappears just as the ray of the sun disappears into the sun. And this is the meaning of the alteration of the letters of the name Adnos with the letters of the name Avaya. When the name, we mentioned this yesterday, there's a whole, there's a whole formula how we interchange the letters. So when the letters of one divine name are altered with the letters of another, the name whose initial letters appears first, in, which, I'm sorry, the letters which appear first is the dominant one, and the second name being intertwined and encompassed by it. So if so, for example, the first letter is the initial divine name that designates Chesed, and the second letter represents Gvura, because Chesed always comes first. So the relationship of Chesed will predominate. Yishem Havaya Moira Shehu Azman. The name Havaya transcends time and space, and then we talk about Alikus. Hashem Melech, Hashem Melech, we talk about Elikos, that's within this world, so to speak. He was, he is, and will be all at the same instant, that's the name of I. Past, present, and future all morphs into one. That's Yechud Elah, the higher level of unity with Hashem. Kamesh Kosov, Merayi Mehemna Parshish Pinchos, as is stated in the Holy Rai Mehemna, Mechein Lamayla, Mechinas Mokim, Mechinas Mokim, Kihu, Mehave, and likewise, the name Havaya transcends space. For Havaya continuously brings into existence the whole dimension of space. From the highest level of space to the lower level of space and all four directions, as we mentioned. So clearly the name Havaya transcends time and space. The name Malchus and Nadnus, however, do not bear... I'm sorry, do bear some relation to time and space. They're Malchus and Adnus, which creates the world and creates time and space, have a relationship. Nevertheless, since the letters of the name Adnus are interspaced within the letters of Havaya, the dimension of time and space are completely nullified in relation to Hashem. So where are they not nullified? On relationship from our perspective. From Hashem's perspective, the name Adnus becomes completely bottle, nullified in relation to Hashem, and this is called Yehud Ilah, the higher level of unity. So what's the takeaway? What are we learning here? Do not let the facade of creation confuse you. Remember at all times that the world is really an expression of Hashem's infinite light, and it might look otherwise, but everything is Hashem, everything is His oneness, and we say, Shema Yisrael Hashem Echad, we're not talking about one God that rules the world, we're talking about that there is only God, in the world. There is no past, present, and future. It's just for our purposes and our sake that we feel that independence Hashem wants us to feel that, to make a dwelling place for Him down here on earth. And on that note, we will dive into Hashem. We will ask Him to send the hostages home and the war, bring peace in the world, and bring Mashiach now.